Welcome again to part two of a set of keys and this part we deals with working with the dead. Uh, the contents are an introduction, the technique of meditative following, reading to the dead, helping the dead and discovering karmic links. Uh, in as an introduction really it should be said that these are exercises which can be useful in discovering what happens when we die and you will certainly see this for yourself at some stage. Their use is not just in preparing for our own demise, but also for helping those to whom we have been bound in life to adjust to their new changed circumstances. Once again, it's important to have previously acquired a certain familiarity with the techniques already noted, and a certain mastery of thinking, <coughs> Pardon me, because otherwise you will not have sufficient control to obtain useful results and no attention that is subtle enough to pick up on the finer elements involved. It must be stressed that developing and strengthening a sense of truth is absolutely vital in this area where there is such a powerful risk of illusion. All the techniques for telling truth from self-pleasing illusion will be required in order to be able to work usefully. It is for this reason that the techniques of investigation have been placed towards the end of this work. So the first technique to be used is meditative following. This technique involves imagining the dead at the very best of their human potential. The purpose is to develop contact and a kind of sensitivity over time. You can ask yourself, and the dead person evoked in this way, what changes are taking place in the circumstances of the dead over time? How long does each stage last? What assistance do the dead need and how can we help them? What is appropriate to send to them and what is not? For how long can the dead be followed? And is the answer individual or general? Is it possible to compensate after death for what has been uh, learned or what has not been learned? What do the dead contribute to other people and to other entities? Is this, uh, are these items general matters or individual? Because individual circumstances may be widely different. Certain categories of people are especially suited for this exercise and they include the following. People with whom we've been closely linked in life by karmic links or linked by fate. Those who have undergone early or sudden deaths and those who die in mass events such as catastrophes, terrorist attacks and so on and so forth. You can also ask yourself what other questions can you add and what other classes of dead can you add to those that you can get in touch with? The next exercise is a strange one. It's called reading to the dead. And it involves taking a text with a spiritual context, content. And that, by that I mean spiritual science literature, such as a, one of the many, many lecture cycles by Rudolf Steiner, or so on. A meditative or a religious text, and here it is best to choose one that comes from the tradition with which you feel most at home, and evoking the image of the dead person or persons as above, and then thinking the contents through as consciously as possible for and on behalf of the dead person or persons, as if you were reading to them. And the questions then can be asked, which are, who should be included in, this, in these readings and should anyone be excluded? What should be read to them in this way? How intently do the contents have to be thought through in order for the exercise to be effective? What extent does knowledge of an earthly language help in this exercise? And for how long does that knowledge or the contribution of that knowledge last. Then there is the issue of what help we can give to the dead. This follows on from following on following the dead and initial answers will be given through the questions stated. 
Further lessons can be learnt by asking the answers to the following, which is, what do heat and cold mean to the dead? What manifests behind those sensations? Can the dead be lonely and or isolated? Are some incarnate people on earth invisible to them? And if so, who and why? Karmic links. These are links of destiny, if you like. And it will be obvious from the practice of the exercises given above that it can be useful dis to discover if any links exist. Uh, in addition to pure perception on living and memory review of the relationship, the technique of repeated meditation of the subject person can be a useful way of finding answers to these questions. To whom am I linked? Besides the obvious, are links stronger with friends or enemies? Uh, or do either play the opposite role be beyond appearances? Can links be strengthened? Are there any differences in the bonds before and after death? What differences are there from when the people to whom we were bound are, were alive? Are these bonds something only from the past, or can new bonds be made for the future? Do we have to be incarnate when we are making such bonds? Inc yeah. And that's all I have in this, in this particular uh, lesson. Uh, thank you for your time. I think, I certainly hope you will find these things to be useful and fruitful. And look forward to the next lesson. Bye.